It was a rainy day and I was about to embark up the Scrang River in Borneo. In my right hand, I had a black plastic garbage bag with some, a change of clothes as I climbed into this long boat. Well, unfortunately, it turned into a torrential downpour. So the uh, gentleman running the uh, longboat decided that we should all go over and wait out the rainstorm on the bank of the river. So there was a group of uh, 16 of us, and we decided that we would go stand over there. And so we hustled over into the hut. And lo and behold, we're standing there, and the water's just drenching down as it only can do in the tropical countries. And I turned around, and I looked at my surroundings. Meantime, there's thunderclaps. And all of a sudden, I said, I'm getting out of here. And I went out of the hut. Here were barrels of petrol, just waiting for a hit. <clears throat> We got out safely, wet, but on upward the river we continued to spend the night with the uh, in the longhouse with the headhunters. <laughs> <laughs> this trip was just getting even better. <laughs> we had a greeting and then a, a meal, and everybody came out uh, in the longhouse, and it's it's basically built. Uh, with a great big porch at the front, and then there's private rooms behind. So each family has their own room. Well, they did serve as a meal, and then they did their ceremonial dancing of the feathers. And you, the uh, symbol of uh, power is to have a tattoo on your Adam's apple. Mm -hmm. So these people are heavily tattooed, and feathers, and they make a click, click noise. But anyways, they were dancing and everything was fine. We were enjoying ourselves just immensely. Now, it's time to retire. Decision, do we go inside and sleep in one of their houses where there won't be any mosquitoes? Or two, do we sleep outside on the open air on bamboo mats <laughs> with um, a mosquito coil at the base of our feet. Well, I was one of the few that decided I was going to sleep outside. So I slept outside. I didn't need my change of clothes because I wasn't changing. <laughs> so in we, under a cover, and everything's fine. And I looked up. And lo and behold, above my head are rows and rows of skulls that they have taken. They're dead. So anyways, I thought, nobody's going to believe this, Leslie. You just aren't going to get this story across. Well, and I was so excited, I couldn't sleep. And I was just sort of, you know, trembling. And then all of a sudden, we hear this hollering and excitement in the dark coming from the jungle. And these two men come along, and they've got a long pole, and they have an animal strung upside down that they've killed with their blow darts, their blow guns. And they were very excited and talking about how wonderful they were as a hunter, I think. And all of a sudden, Ding, 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 ding. There was a battery run Westminster chime clock <laughs> announcing it was midnight. <laughs> and that is the night of sleeping with the headhunters. <laughs> and in the morning, I looked down, I heard all this noise. And I peeked through the uh, bamboo, and here was the pigsty below my feet. Oh. Oh, and all the people 
who had slept inside the house came out and they were covered in flea bites. Wow. <laughs> That's how I survived my night with the headhunters. Oh.